All right, so I've got a very standard fare, common lawnmower, probably one of the most common lawnmowers you'll find. This is spring, so, but this problem occurs <clears throat> throughout the year, but mostly in the spring. It's an MTD, it says Yardman on it, but same as Craftsman, big box store, right? You go to your local big box store and you plunk down, they're about $300 now. And you want with some of the cheapest lawnmowers you can get. Uh, and it's not a bad machine if you buy it new and you take care of it. But we're talking about uh, one of the most common problems. And so the customer spring goes to start it up, right? It kind of runs for a little bit and then maybe shuts off. Well, that's because, and in so many cases, there's water in this. Uh, and this is the fuel that I sucked out of the tank with my little custom handy dandy fuel sucker tool. Oh, you can get these at Harbor Freight, at least you used to be able to, and I just modified it to put it in these nice mason jars. So you gotta, that's why I like to do this right away. I hear it runs for a little bit and then it shuts off. That's because the water will settle out and to some degree it'll settle in the, in the bottom of the gas tank and, and maybe it'll settle in the bottom of the carburetor and then maybe you'll get lucky and somehow or other you'll pick up a bit of the fuel um, it'll run for a minute, but then, you know, it's got water in it and it's just, it's just not going to do it. It may not even start. So as soon as you start to empty out your gas, and one of the ways you can, you can tell, either use a turkey baster, make some kind of a suction device, tilt the machine and capture the fluid, you know, wipe off around here. You don't want to, you want to try to capture it in like a tray or something. Uh, let me give you an example here. As I walk off camera, that's not professional, Arch. Yeah, fellas, I know. Okay, look. I got a couple of trays here. I keep them clean. I use them to clean carburetors. You'll see, we're gonna do that in a minute. Um, anything that you can capture it and maybe pour it into a glass or, I, I would say glass is probably your best bet. And you'll see later on, we'll come back later and there'll be a line of delineation, right? Where it actually separates out and we'll see the water and then the fuel will sit uh, on the bottom. And there's not much in here. I will explain to him what happened and I will give him some, you know, some tips and what have you. It's just so common, especially here because it's sitting out, the fog rolls in, there's alcohol in the gas. I have a number of videos on this as well. And, uh, and your gas can may not be left in a good spot. If it's in a shed outside, you know, that water is trying to find its way into your gas can on a regular basis. But it's also trying to find its way into here because these are vented caps or they may be vented uh, over here into the air filter area and just think about it. It's like 24 7 every day and For months on end until you go to pull the pull cord So let's get started on it One of the things I like about these is that it's three bolts that holds the top on so it's real easy to take the tank off uh, we'll go a little bit through pulling the carburetor off and um, I'm Gonna bring this thing outside and let's get it cleaned up. We'll show up in the blade. Stay tuned. Right, before we go outside, I just want to show you taking the top off. Sorry, fellas, there's a lot of noise. They're blowing out back there, and um, they're probably going to be on and off all day. They got a little close before. Um, let's pull these off. Like I said, three bolts across the top. I think this is like 5 16 And try not to use the zip gun, fellas, because uh, especially on these little engines, I mean, I do use them, but one, you know, you want to kind of feel how tight things are. So... I like to recommend that it doesn't take that long, uh, especially putting something together, right? Taking it apart might be one thing, but you want to feel how tight it is. All right, so this comes right off. Now we can clean in here. And it's not too bad, right? I'll give you a close-up in a minute. Uh, so this one is a push prime. If yours is an automatic choke, there's a spring in there. So if you use any kind of a pressure washer, be careful. See, look, it's, it's just, it's gacked. Right, so it needs to tune up as well, and now we can pop this tank up. I just kind of lift it up. I'll show you another bit of footage on that too. Okay, once it comes up, let's close the tank. It's got filth all over it. We are going to rinse it out, right, because there could be dirt in it. We're going to clean that out because that gets sticky. The blade will wash too, but it's not too bad. That's why I say 
you need to get in here and do it. You see here, we'll talk more about it in a minute, but you wouldn't want to just pull this carburetor off with all that filth. Um, you're going to have to clean it. It could fall back in. You can't really service it. Any little bit that gets back in, if you try servicing it here on the engine, it's not worth it. Let's give it a quick clean. All right, fellas, I'm going to choose my weapon for this afternoon. Just to stand it super clean, and that's just to get off. You see there's still some junk on there and some on the inside of the wheel, right? I like to hang it over the edge and spin them up. Try to get in there. Sometimes I put a little paint back when required. So I'm just going to shoot these things up. A little bit of super clean. And uh, I'll let it sit for 5 or 10 and go do something else. We'll come back and you'll see how nice and clean it is. But we're almost done. This is quick. Right, I got some super clean on that too. I'm going to squeeze it. And rinse it in some water and I'll leave it to dry while we're working on everything else. Super clean. Get yours now. Available at local stores. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pull out these two, these four screws in here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but they're two different sizes. And so the inner ones go into the plastic of the carburetor, and they're more like wood screws or plastic screws. And the outer ones are machine screws. I think this one is like eight or nine millimeter. Um, I'll yell it out, but it doesn't matter. You got you got to need a good socket set of something. Pull them out by hand. These are the bigger ones. Right there, the machine thread. And there is it's this thing here is your is your vent. You want to clean behind here, and then we could just pull this forward towards us. And then this is like on a Z bend, so just give it a, a turn. You'll see it. All right. Now, what we want the first thing we want to do since we know there's water in here, there could be dirt in it. So we're going to disconnect it here. I'm going to put a little bit of my special sauce on it. And I'm just going to move the clamp back. Give it a twist. And then there you go. So I'm going to take that outside or even in here and wash it, blow it. Um, my general technique is, is this may just have water in it. So if I can see in here. But, you know, we know there's water in here. So what you can do is if it's clean inside, but I don't trust it because um, it, it's dark in the tank, so you can't really tell. Normally what I'll do is, is I'll wash it out with the hose then I'll cap this end. I'll put a little bit of super clean in, shake a little bit of water, shake it around then rinse it thoroughly. And then I'll start blowing with an air compressor. Um, if you don't have an air compressor, you're going to have to wash it out with gasoline or alcohol. Okay. And then I'll blow it with the hose, and then when I think it's about dry, I'll cap it again, and I'll put some gas in it, close the lid, shake it up, pour it out, and blow it again. And that bit of alcohol or whatever in the gas, um, it'll just kind of pull out whatever's left in there, and I'll set it aside in the sun. So this is another one of those things that, you know, <clears throat> this should take you about a, a day to do, right? It's really a 20-minute fix. But if you've got water in here, you've, you probably have dirt in here as well. So you've got to get that out. This is the source of your problem. Um, and a lot of times the air is coming in through the vent. There's also a vent here. And it's filtered air, but it's not air that's, you know, it's air that's water laden over the months of depending on where you live. So let me go do this. We'll pull the plug. And this will bring over on the table in a bit. We're going to give it a good wash. And, uh, and then we're going, to, we're going to dump the oil. So a lot of this stuff is going to be happening at the same time. I'll be right back and then go take, start taking care of the tank. All right, now that we've got most of the other stuff out of the way, and I had mentioned earlier this is like a 930 seconds, but this is 7 millimeter. So we'll put that on our socket. And I'm going to just do a quick wash, fellas, because I, I can see there's dirt in here. And I'm just going to spend a minute, and then I'll blow with low-pressure air. Because you know, the idea is to get things cleaner and cleaner as we go. And not infiltrate filth back in. 
All right, so let me do this. I'll be right back. I'll give it a blow. Again, about, about 20 pounds is all you need. You don't need a lot, maybe 20, 30 pounds max. And uh, yeah, with the pressure washer, got a lot of it. See how it really wasn't that bad. <clears throat> Here's a tip. What I like to do is I like to just cut these down. And then you could use them to get into spots. You know, makes the bristles a little more robust. All right, it's getting slippery. Let me get rid of this. Now, these were left on the manifold. <clears throat> That's like, this is a lock, and this is the O-ring. So I cleaned it off, and I'll show you that in a bit. It goes in here. And sometimes junk gets trapped underneath this. So I'm going to want to deal with that. Now, we can open it up. Oh, I wanted to show you, too. Plug was pretty decent. Uh, very dry. We're gonna put. We're gonna clean this up. Put some no C's on it if you want. Um, it's an RC twelve YC. Pick up yourself a fresh plug. So as I mentioned, seven millimeters. And uh, don't use power tools on this, fellas, because you're you're not gonna be happy. You strip this out. I mean, there's a way to fix it. We can put tie wrap, bread ties. Things like that, but you could also risk cracking um, the carburetor body. So to get this off, right, we're just going to find a spot, like right in here, I'm going to pry up. And you'll see. See it? It's coming up. Now, a lot of times, junk will lurk in this area here, so we want to make sure that's clean. But it looks real good. It's just water, it looks like, that we got. Try to get underneath there. And make sure all around here is good. So we're just going to hit it with my cleaner. I think I'm going to do is make adjustment to the cameras real quick. This way you can see the other camera as well. But, but I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah, she's clean. It looks like it would snap in, but it doesn't. So we have to pull this out. I'm going to use an actual pair of needle nose pliers. Put that to the side, pull straight up. And uh, she's clean. There's our needle. Now to get this out, we're going to grab it. Don't grab here where the jet is. I'm going to grab it here and just hold on to it and give it a tug. All right now, now I have seen mechanics on YouTube make the mistake of poking a screwdriver in here and prying up. And that is never a good idea uh, because you could nick the, well, first of all, you could scratch this housing here and then, of course, it'll leak. Or you can distort it, and then, of course, it'll leak. It's only plastic. Or you can nick or tear at this O-ring, and it'll leak. You can buy a new one of these. I'll, I'll put a link in. But um, this she, she looks real good in here. I'm just going to run this brush in down in this area here. Yeah, she's, she's clean. There's no dirt in this. Let me back out a little bit more. I'm trying to get a feel for double cameras and different ways I can use them. So let's just spray in there with some gum out. She's not even dirty. She, it's just water. I could see some dribbles of water, but some of that might have come from us, you know, cleaning. Now, there is a Venturi booster in here. And we're going to Kind of knock that out. There it comes. And dirt will, it'll kind of harbor underneath there. I'll show you how to put that back. There's no dirt. All right. It's, it's, she's in good shape. It's just the water. We'll get into all these different holes. Right. It's just a little bit. I saw a little bit of dirt. Tiny little bit. You would see it. 
All right, let me blow this out. Away from the table, fellas. Again, low pressure. Yeah, this is clean. Now, um, I'll show you a little trick I have. There's a couple of ways of doing it, but um, what you'll notice is there's a little baffle that goes over this. You don't really need it, but if you want to put it back, um, because it's in plastic, it's, it's not going to stay. So I'll show you a trick with a soldering iron a little bit, a smoldering iron. Let's just run this through. A lot of times, the stuff will get stuck right by the jet. And I just did one where there was some junk in it, but there's no junk in this one. Yeah, she looks good. Let me give it a blow. Don't soak these with gum out or carburetor cleaner. Right, You'll kill it. Um, you can. I use my tranny fluid mix, um, which is just gas, half gas, half tranny fluid. And why? Because transmission fluid is great. I've got some videos on it. Um, and why? Because, well, what's in transmission fluid? Right? I mean, what is it used for, right? It, you know, inside a transmission is just nothing but, like, highly polished metals of different types. Usually aluminum and steel. That would rust. And then tons of O-rings. So we're clean. We put this up uh, out of the way. And we're going to do assembly. I'm going to let my smoldering iron heat up. And we'll come back for the rest of it. Now, I want to show you, I'm going to drop this baby back in there, right, into that recess. And I'm going to need something bigger than my club finger, uh, smaller than my club fingers. I know, there's probably a joke there. Yeah, I, I, I get it, fellas. All right, let me put that in. Press it down. Now, I'm going to take my hot, it'll snap if you push down. Okay, I'm just going to take my hot smoldering iron and I'm going to very carefully just press down a little bit and just deform and cause a little bit of that plastic. Don't touch anything else. Don't hit, you know, any other corners or whatever. It's, it's very heat resistant. There we go. I'm just going to do it in a couple of places. Because right, this plastic is made for heat. There we go. That's it. All right. Let me put my soldering iron out of the way so I don't stab myself. And it'll stay. And just make sure that there's nothing flaky that's going to fall in and hit the jet. Give it a quick blow. All right. We're ready for assembly now. I just wanted to show you. I did the plug real quick. I cleaned it. And, uh, let's see, 28 thousandths to 30 thousandths max. These are little engines. Right, and um, we have a gasket on here. And a lot of times, if you get a new one, you're going to have to seat the gasket. And we'll talk about that. But you want to, it's going to feel like it's stripping. But it's not. And a little no seize on it. And then, of course, off camera, I took the liberty of, you know, cleaning the back side of, of our um, adapter plate. Okay, now we're ready for assembly, so the next thing we want to do is we want to put the jet in, but we got to put this booster in, and the booster will only go in one direction, and so we're going to slide it in from this side, and that little hole, okay, that's what this is all about. So we want that hole towards that hole that's in the center of the jet pack. And if it doesn't line up, we'll just stick a screwdriver in here or an awl or something. I'm gonna poke at it a little bit. Twist it. Got my pick. There we go. Just gonna align it. See? So now it's aligned. This only goes in one direction. Okay, and you'll notice it. I just want to peek in there and looking for any junk. Um, so we're going to put, I've already got some tranny fluid on, on the jet pack, but we want to drew it in here so it goes in nice and easy. And you'll see it, it'll only go in one direction. Right, doesn't want to go that way. 
Oh, let's go that way. See? And we'll just press. That's it. You can see it, it penetrated up through there. All right, we're done there. And now we can grab our needle. Put it on, hang it on the float. Drop it in as careful as we can. And we got to slide this puppy in. Take your time. The two cameras is nice. The overhead is better because it, you notice my hand gets in the way of the left camera, the lower left. So if you're coming from the side, um, it, you know sometimes I'll block myself. Now we're just gonna block. I'm just gonna kind of suck. Oh, it's sealed. And then when I go in the other direction, which we'll do that in a bit. Now let's put some of the tranny sauce on here to make it easier to go in and be assembled so we don't distort anything and so this is like a lug here like a plug that they used this is where, where we want to look at and so this recess here is for the top of the jet right the main jet so we're going to line those up and once they're lined up you want to go in straight align with the holes and then just push down and you should not be driving this down with the screws it should go for you and with the added lubricant, it will. And it, it'll feel like it cocks a little bit. But again, there we go. It's seated. Right? When you want it seated, you want to know it's seated because you don't want these things to drive it down. It'll cock and you'll wind up stripping out the threads. Now we can tighten this up. By hand, no power tools. Make sure they're aligned and they're going in straight. All right, so I'm going to just kind of Tighten that up a little bit. Not really tight, but just snug it and then drive in the next one. Make sure, like I said, make sure they're going in straight. Okay, now I can just give it a quick tight on that. Quick tight on that. Now, that's the O-ring. Special sauce. O-ring goes down. Make sure it's all clean in here. Then we'll press the lock into place. You'll hear it snap. And you got this guy. Make sure she sits nice and flush and there's no junk in there. And she'll stay for your assembly. All right, if you want, you can sweeten it up. And if you want, you can sweeten the throttle shaft a little bit. There's a little, there should be, well, there's usually a piece of foam in there, but it tends to, you know, go away. But everything's moving good. Um, let's go put it on. All right, we just have to reverse the procedure, right? We don't have the tank on now, but we'll put it on in a bit. So I'm just going to roll that in. I'll give you a close-up in a minute. And just line everything up, right? We already have the gasket installed. Give it a push. Okay. Helps have the lube on it. And now we can bolt this on, just like before. Line it all up. Remember... Right, the fine threads, they go into the metal. So I like to start everything. Right, just get it started. Don't tighten it. This way we can line everything up. Including the carburetor. So we got our seven millimeters, so it's eight and seven. And then we'll tighten. And we'll put the tank on. All right, now we can start tightening. Just by hand, right? No power tools. I'll take a little bit of my special sauce just to make it, you know, for it easy for to put the tank on. A little bit in the hole. Slide our nice clean tank in. Make sure it seats all the way down. Put the lock back. You know, clamp. And then again, it's a bayonet mount. Slide up and get it started. We'll just give you a shot at that, and then we'll push it down. Okay. 
right, just push it down all the way. That's it. All right, well, we'll put, see this fits in here. All right, cleaned up with super clean, all ready to go, all right? Dry, because they did that earlier. And some people put a little oil on it. Um, a light oil, but you know, I've seen motor oil, like 1030, just a little bit, a touch of maybe WD, but um, you don't want to, you don't want to put so much on that it can't breathe. So that's all done, and we got to put uh, oil in it, and I have a couple other little things to do. All right, it's time for a test. I got the bail pulled back. Let's give it, you know, a bunch of primes. That's why it rolled. Right, fellas well, and ladies too right simple tune up but the most common problem this time of year springtime is this <clears throat> doesn't matter what lawnmower you have what machine it's so common to kind of get the uh, fuel contaminated by sitting over many many months with alcohols in the gas and that alcohol is going to draw in that water and then you're going to have to get it out and the only way to get it out really is you got to get it out of the, the gas tank in order and get it out of the carburetor and know that you have it out now if you've been running your lawnmower for a number of years or seasons uh, it's time to do a tune-up it's time to do a cleanup and so it takes about 20 minutes or so to a half hour to really pull a carburetor apart and clean out the tank um, and get everything back together so it really is like a 20 30 minute repair now one last thing is your gas can right whatever you're using for a gas can if that water didn't come just from the environment, it came from your gas can. It could be water in that gas can. Maybe you left it in the wrong spot. And, and I've heard, I just put fresh gas in. Yeah, but you left the junk in the bottom. You left a bit of water in the bottom. There was still something in there. Something to think about. Maybe, maybe it's time to buy a new gas can, right? And new gas can, start again. Get something that can be sealed and tight to the weather. Get a good one. And... Uh, Put about 89 octane. 89 because if you if you store like five gallons or more of fuel, uh, it, you lose about one octane every month or so, depending upon the temperature of the weather. Uh, so if you start off with 89 in a month or so, by the end of the season, if you have some left, you might wind up with 87. Uh, and that really is the bare minimum we want for these. So thanks for watching this episode of Archer's Garage. And uh, come on back for more. I'll leave some links in the bottom in the description. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to, to get to the next project. I'll see you guys later.